Welcome to channel viewers, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, theologist, just thinking about how diabolical triangulation is and how many different forms it can take. It can be very covert, well for a lot of it it is covert because once triangulation comes out of the cupboard, the intrusion of it is not something that a lot of people put up with or tolerate. Triangulation is exhaustive, um, it will wear you down mentally because you'll find that the attention of the person that you're with is being distributed, the intimate attention, not just the professional attention, but the intimate attention is being distributed in places that is not complementary to the relationship. And takes from the relationship, it causes aggravation, um, it causes frustration, uh, it causes resentment and bitterness. Um, and this unfortunately can happen uh, with fathers and their daughters and all different all different elements like that, mothers and sons and Usually the mother and son thing, once it's exposed or as it wears away, the relationship will cause the person doing it, the person in the triangulation, to want to probably leave. It all becomes too much for them. Um, it's too too difficult to try and bring somebody in the or into order in the family structure that's already dysfunctional to a point of smoker walking around out here, it's fucking smokers, um, it'll usually, there's another problem, people that smoke and vape and all this, what you've got to understand is if they can't look after themselves, what makes you think they're going to, you know, look after anything else in a way that's constructive, that's just another, another topic for another day, isn't it, but triangulation's got a diabolical way of undermining the nature, the substance, the foundation, the core of the relationship because it's an intrusion. And this intrusion will remain there even if it's covert. The problem with it is a lot of these people... Um, can't can't keep it covert it becomes over and then this of course in turn causes stress anxiety and frustrations on people that um are trying to bring sanity to now i'm talking about exclusive relationships that should be maturing by the time Triangulation sticks its ugly head in <laughs> to a relationship. How, when you're in a relationship with a narcissistic yeah. person? Um, the triangulation will start to demoralize where you're at. Um, they're not going to really care about what's happening to them because they're the one causing it. They're just going to go with it. Usually there's some kind of... Either they're frustrated or they're just dysfunctional. See, a lot of people need to have multiple sources of supply. And it doesn't have to be a physical, and a, a physical affair. It can be a highly emotionally intimate affair the sexless they'll be having sex with you but they might be more intimately emotionally connected with their golden child or a friend or this type of thing this happens all the time so that leaves you in a vulnerable situation where there's an element of 
emotional, intimate um, supply that's just not there. The, nece the necessary supply. Sorry, really. That's required in an intimate relationship, emotional, uh, intimate, physical relationship. If that supply is not there, then that's going to bring questioning, that's going to bring alarm bells, that's going to bring red flags. And the person that's in that relationship, in my case, me, is going to start to wonder what exactly is going on. And what I found was covert emotional enmeshment, incest. People don't like the word incest, but blow it. Professor Sam Buckman reckons that and believes on his opinion that covert emotional incest is far more damaging than sexual incest. Um, for all sorts of different reasons, because it's so covert, it's a language without sound. It's a language without voice. It's, an, it's a psychological interaction taking place with so many emotions attached to it that the damage that it causes is no less than that of the damage of a physical ancestral situation. Now, the people that are in it aren't going to want to hear that. They're not going to, going to want to go along with that. They're really not going to want to agree with that. But that doesn't matter. When you watch co full-blown covert emotional incest working itself out, it doesn't just affect the people that are doing it, the family members that are doing it. It affects everyone else around them, particularly the partner of these people that are intimately attached <sighs> with each other it causes trauma for them even though it's an addictive form of behavior because you've got to have your fix and when somebody comes along and the supply to the covert emotional incest shifts to a third person relationship outside the family, that's when the degeneration starts to take place. That's when the psychological collapse starts to take place inside the person that's outside the intimate relationship. The family member will notice that the attention supply the control that they had over that person shifts in the negative for them and it gives them a sense of betrayal severe betrayal because that was never part of the plan when it comes to covert emotional incest I'm your husband I'm your mother, I'm your father, I'm your daughter, I'm your partner, all the, these things, all these attachments manifesting through the covert emotional incest. <laughs> Big days work and so while you're watching this, there's tremendous conflict going on behind the scenes. The mother will be being abused. She might be passive aggressive and she doesn't know how to resolve anything via confrontation unless it's anything but her children. Though, you know, these people are frightened of their children for the most part. Either that or they're liars, because I've had them say it to me, I'm frightened of so-and-so and this and that. I'm thinking, what are you frightened of? It's a little infant child, even though they're 20, 25, 30, 35, etc. And the possession 
that these th people think they've got over their parents and, and this kind of thing. is so deep and so profound that the trauma that they must have as a result of being in the covert emotional incest in the first place is real, you see it I've had these mothers say, I just don't know what to do. I don't know what's happening. They know what's happening, but from a different end. A lot of these women have used their children as shields to shield away the partner or previous partner or husband or whatever. They've trained, trained these and groomed these children, if it's a case of emotional incest, to believe that men if it be that way are trouble and should be treated as such even though they're little men themselves but I think a lot of them are very feminine and narcissistic which means the covert emotional incest by way of a lack of separation identification from the mother if that's the right word I know it's a lack of separation from the mother, they're still on the teat of the mother. They're still holding onto the mother's arm, spiritually as it were. The hose is still connected. The drip's still connected between the mother and the son. They're drip feeding each other, whatever they can. It's really sick when you think about it. But that's what it is. And there's nothing you can do. There's just nothing you can do. Doesn't matter how hard you try what you think's around the corner, what's going to happen, what's not going to happen. They're going to treat you like crap. They're going to vandalise you emotionally. They're going to decharacterize you. They're going to... I had one daughter of a woman that went narcissist, seriously narcissistic. I had to ask her and her son to leave go ahead and try and ruin a relationship that I just started just by chance. I didn't even mean to, it was just a fluke that I met this other person and her sons ended up, or one of them, ended up becoming very hostile, nasty and not worth knowing, to be honest. Just a cuckoo. And so you're up against it if you can't figure it out and you're not aware of it it'll leak you up it'll spit you out they'll be sitting eating dinner together while you're wondering what the hell's going on they'll be grooming each other they'll be in lust with each other even though they know it's wrong and it's destroying them that's their little secret nasty dirty little secret that they've got and that ain't changing for no one because it's DNA, it's bloodline. And you'll tell that person to go and they've already got the, the situation set up so that don't matter. They can't lose. You're just a form of supply, friend. You're not as important as you think. You just are not as important as you think you are. If you don't believe me, split up with that person and see what happens. You won't hear from them again. I guarantee it. They ain't coming out of nowhere because it was a problem that they couldn't have resolved. It was a problem that they had before you come along. It's a problem that they're going to have after you're gone. So don't worry what's going to happen. It doesn't matter. Who cares? Those children will probably resent that person later in life for robbing them of the wisdom that they needed to have by way of their parents and they'll get upset with those people and those parents they might become black sheep and leave the family break the curse
find a life for themselves outside the horrible, horrible conditioning of covert emotional incest. You'll see a lot of these mothers ruin their relationships, trying to allow this, these children and sons to lead their lives. A parent becomes a child, child becomes a parent, that kind of thing. And then it's all downhill from there. When you come along, they want probably enjoy your supply once you once they've come out of the cupboard they'll try and hang on but they just won't give in somebody will have a psychological collapse you'll get separated they don't want you around and that's how it works they just come to your place you can see that coming anyway. You give them benefit of the doubt. They don't change anything. Nothing gets better. You walk away. Whose fault's that? Not yours, I can assure you. It's probably the child, the adult child, wants mummy's titty, needs to hold mummy's hand, needs mummy to do his hair and all this, you know. I love you, mummy. And they bring it on themselves. It's no good somebody listening to this and go, well, that's, you know. If, you, if, if this is the way you are, face it and fix it. Do something about it. Don't just be a grub and sit there and get on, oh, my de depression and anxiety and I'm going to commit suicide and you think it's funny and all this crap and rubbish. You know, you're trying to build high-rise buildings and you've got these little grubs, parasites in the background the woman's trying to have a relationship and you got these parasites just ruining it for her and they give into it which means they're going to ruin you so you have to leave you know these stupid single mothers put their effort into relationships and build them so far and they can't build them any further because their parasitical leech children won't allow them to they just won't allow them to go, go any further. And you're laughing your head off like you, your performance shouldn't change, although it gets so stressful. You know, you want, they're probably wondering, how is this person still managing their performance in this relationship? The fact of the matter is, because that's what you do. You don't wreck your relationship. But unfortunately, a lot of these people do. They just don't play the part that they're supposed to play. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, theologist, Gosford, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Bye for now.